this is the uh, Conservation Commission um, uh, for the Fair, for Fairfield, Connecticut, acting as the Inland Wetlands uh, Agency uh, for for Wednesday, April 6, twenty twenty two. Um, right. You have to hold it. Yeah, yeah. Hold that's it. okay. Um, and I'll take the roll. Um, me, Lucas Thomas, Gary Alessi, uh, Daphne is here, Bowen, Peter Hood is here, Brian McCann is here, and Richard Jay is here, and Jay Payne is here. Good. And Amanda Martins Campbell mentioned she would be here and there she is she's online but so she's here with us as well greetings from tulsa i think we have a full board i don't need to uh put anybody in as a uh, full member so i think we're okay uh the bills and communications number three a approval of meeting minutes of march to 2022. I have a motion to, uh, for approval of the meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Jerry? Second, Brian? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, B, approval of the recording secretary's bill of March to 2002. I have a motion there. Motion. Uh, second, anyone? Second. Richard? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, now on to Roman four, um, Inland Wetland Deliberative Session, A, Old Business, number one, WP 22106, Fairfield University, 1073 North Benson Road, uh, construction of a new residence hall with associated site improvements within a regulated area. Last day for public hearing and decision is May 6, 2022. Last regular meeting prior is May 2nd, 2022. The staff recommends approval with conditions. Any uh, comments? Any comments? Um, yeah, starting the agenda, um, I noticed that on the agenda, one of the files that was heard about this application attached to it's actually the staff report, Lake Mohegan Beach Restoration, not the uh, Okay. You can continue. I had a uh, number of uh, comments regarding the application substance. Um, first, is termination of significance. This being uh, not being considered, considered uh, significant activity. Uh, just wondering how that staff came to that recommendation. Uh, on this uh, rather large building, 55,000 square feet, square feet, uh, I want to um, apply the same metrics to this application as any other application pending for the agency. Um, we do have another one that uh, we are looking at, and I just want to make sure that, that we use the same yardstick for both of those applications. Again, this, uh, I think, activity is within me. Few feet or even inches of this wetland on this particular property. I had a quad question with regards to wetland delineation and why it's not being required. That's why those reports typically require for a uh, regulated activity such as this and being waived in this. I think it's required so that we can find the same metrics. Regarding the anticipated impacts and discussion. Um, I had a question, has the applicant supplied a biological report, an impact assessment, or even a biological uh, project narrative? This, uh, this, this, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that we should require saying, again, so we find the same metric for this application as it was to other applications. Regards to the, um, I wanted to read a paragraph from the uh, staff report, and just ask a question for the court regarding this. Construction of the new residence hall is not expected to have any more than a limited impact on the 
what we're doing around the country. Based on the current campus landscape surrounding the immediate project in the area, the area adjacent to the building dominated by impervious services, buildings, and parking, and introduction of new residence hall is not anticipated to have any negative impact on the wetlands quality, the floor, fauna, or functionality. Rather, it is expected to be improved with the introduction of the fine border using polar to pull up enhancement of vegetation. That staff opinion? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And is there any basis in the record yeah. um, for that opinion? Some observations uh, from three site visits, uh, including uh, yesterday, uh, this morning during the rain. Uh, wetlands, uh, while they may be uh, hydric soils, um, like I said, they're not highly in the urban environment, but the building on the downgrading side uh, serves as small stormwater detention, nothing more surrounded by mostly parking lot. I know that in you know, your staff report, you also that wetland depends while well, I may use wetland. So that I just wanted, I think that we should follow up that. And there is wetland dependent while like using it. We would have to know what the impact on the wetland habitat would be protected. Um, in the staff report, it refers to alternatives. Um, and then staff that alluded to the alternatives were considered, but they have not been. Um, provided. I'd like to see what alternatives were, were um, considered here, and if there are any other alternatives that would possibly lesser that. Again, I'm very close to a, a wetland here, and we, I don't have an evaluation of that wetland, so I can't really say that personally that there would not be an impact. In terms of the mitigation, um, should trees to be removed, the notes to be saved should be shown. Um, I don't think the trees are very good. The white pines are typically hazard trees, but I do believe that we should show that uh, the trees to be removed have been shown. Um, staff report we conclude to the mitigation planting plan and um, that it has not been supplied. I agree that that's a major uh, issue that needs to be supplied, and I'd like to review it before we move on to the topic. I was at Fairview recently, and I was at the New Dolan Hall uh, Business School, and they had uh, done a very nice job there with mitigation plantings and incorporating a conservation easement with uh, conservation markings on it. I don't know why we wouldn't want to see the same thing here, so we looked at that. So we could possibly incorporate that to this application. Um, that was my comment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll have the applicant present. Yes. Hello. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is David Brass, and I am vice president for facilities at Fairfield University. I have with me Brian Phillips, who is the planning and engineering and development plan. Any hard questions? I'll pass to Brian. Give you an overview of the submission. Uh, at the top of this page, an existing building known as Regent Hall, and orientation this is round hill road at the bottom of the drawing and we have proposed a new building in location e mark in this area is the detention basin we uh, had a couple options with the design it's actually we modified the original intent of the design we were going to build a straight building um, in more this location uh, met with staff, understood some of their reservations. We moved the building as far to the north as we could. We are limited somewhat by the fact that we have to maintain fire truck access around this side. So we did push it as much this way, and we bent the building so it minimized the impact. This area demarked in blue is the extension basin man made. Uh, and uh, Probably certainly before my time because it's been there as long as I've been. Uh, and it primarily is picking up drainage from existing buildings elsewhere. The drainage associated with this new building uh, goes off the tension, okay, uh, the tension north. Uh, so, pretty much what we noted, we are not um, changing grades in this immediate area. Uh, nor is this really 
modifications that we're making going to change the amount of water and activity in that area. We have shown some boulders to demarcate and keep as best we can students out of that area. Um, and, you know, as we have done in the past, not shown a lot of vegetation being planted, but typically uh, down in the staff afterwards within what is covered. Or? No, I think that's that pretty much tells the story. You know, the, the bulk of the watershed which feeds into this retention basin is remaining unchanged. Um, like David said, all of the all this water currently sheds off to the north, and we're maintaining that uh, hydrological condition. So all of our site drainage will be collected into a underground infiltration basin for connecting into the storm drain. A little bit difficult to see, but those of you who are familiar with the site, currently on this site, this is an existing parking lot. We are eliminating heat spaces. But there is a circular parking lot of asphalt that is part of this program. Removing asphalt doesn't really count. The, uh, there are conditions uh, staff has uh, uh, forwarded this to us that with the recommendation for approval with conditions. There are a number of conditions. Are you aware of the conditions? Uh, so I'll, I'll just relay them. Uh, sub submitting revised plans that indicate location, quantity, size, and size of native wetland plants. Um, and this is just a summary, not word for word. A site monitor uh, will be required throughout the multi-phase construction process. Uh, consideration made during the seasonal timing of wetlands enhancement activities and planting in the spring of 2023. Uh, and then for the peripheral engineering department that a storm stormwater detention design be revised to demonstrate attenuation for all of all for two 100 year storm and soil that that's you say 200 years two 100 year storms soil two through 100. Yeah. Um, No maintenance or other necessary pruning of trees and shrubs shall be performed within the wetland area and the permit duration shall be five years. Are you okay with these things as conditions? Okay. Um, one thing that I did get to mention, uh, well, the point of the building is this southeast corner. We have eliminated uh, basement levels in this area so that the during the construction phase, the line of incidence of sloping has that much less impact. On the Thank you. Any other commissioners with any questions or comments? I have a question for staff. Uh, the work that you are stipulating to be um, done in the wetland between March through May, just curious as to the um, rationale for that timing. Uh, um, I, it just seems to me that it's the, the condition in the effect that there wasn't any uh, wildlife activity. Just some light on that. Uh, any of the time that I've been there, it's been five, six, six points. Stand water. I'm not sure that it's viable habitat for any of I think the biohealth is yeah. necessary yeah. then. It's just so, uh, so urban was conservative. See a lot of use of that given long traffic, foot traffic, vehicle traffic, impervious surface proximity to any other water source or. Uh, usable habitat. So, so in the future, if there, if it were to become usable habitat, that would be a critical time to not do the work because that's when it's most active for our amphibians. Yeah, and most, most rain, right. Exactly. Rainy. So I would agree that the biological evaluation would be a good idea. Yes. 
earlier. If you disagree with them, I just think that, for the record, it would be important to have a evaluation. I think that would help. Yeah, okay. Would anybody care to make a motion to approve with stack recommendations or with any staff recommendations and additional um, requirements? I'll make a motion to approve staff recommendations with additional requirements for biological evaluations and uh, soil. Jay, what else was it? And the soil scientist report. Also, including uh, the uh, for the planting plant. Yeah. The only point I'd like to make is we don't have that information to make the base of the decision on um, kind of water on the bridge. So I, I personally would like to see it before we vote on this. Yeah, agreed. Well, if somebody were to not make a motion, then it wouldn't move forward today. There's a motion on the floor. If somebody seconds that motion, um, just because somebody made a motion doesn't mean you have to vote for that motion. If somebody seconds that motion and we vote, then it would be the vote would count. And it well before we do that, would the applicants agree to the additions that were just discussed by the the commissioners here? So it would be what was it? The biological evaluation and the soil scientist report. Yeah. Okay. That's a condition of approval. Yes. yes. So uh, as we are right now, there's a motion. For approval with staff recommendations with the two additional uh, requirements. Uh, I don't have a second yet. Would anybody care to second? Okay. You'll second? Okay, Brian seconds. Um, all in favor to pass, uh, all in favor for the approval it's the staff conditions plus the two additional conditions? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We have the one opposed, Sarah. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Oh, she's not. We have a full. We have enough. Am I right? Yeah. She's not. It's just she has to the second. Hmm. She tried to talk, but I didn't give it in. I was just confirming that I'm not voting as the not being in panel today. Okay. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Number two. Um, we have IWP 2018-19-09 Blackrock Realty LLC 19 Ash Creek Boulevard for assessors map 80 parcel 4A. Request of land tech for a wetland permit modification for the phasing sequence of the project. See attached. Uh, I think I'll. I can give a brief update. I guess this happened. I think way well before we were all here. Uh, maybe I don't know about you, uh, uh, but but the applicant is back for a permit that this body already already uh, approved. So they're back for a modification. Uh, Tim, unless you want to add something. More to that, you can. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Brian Garrett from Mind Tech is online. He could explain, but uh, just in briefing, um, he was approved several years ago. Uh, the intent for modification um, is to uh, instead of building multiple buildings, just to build uh, one building, which is building number four. Uh, with that, a uh, temporary detention basin will be used for stormwater. Uh, it will be parking lot for a building. And tie into uh, uh, discuss that. Not much is Okay, thank you, Sam. And this uh, staff recommends tabling based on your uh, staff and agency review, right? Okay, so we can have the applicant speak. Online. Hello, uh, this is Brian Carey. I'm director of environmental services at Lantac. We have offices in Westport, Connecticut. Uh, tonight, we're just uh, put forward a, a modification request of the existing IWPA 2018-19-09. Um, 
the modification request is just to allow us to construct building number four, which represents 71 units um, associated with the master plan. Uh, Accurate Builders, who's our client, is actually the contract purchaser of the property at this point. Um, and they're looking for, to go forward with just the construction of building number four at this time. Um, and they are uh, looking to make some modifications to the site master plan in the near future that would either uh, fit with under the existing approval or would need to come back for a new wetland permit in the future, uh, depending on uh, the level of impacts. Um, currently, we do have approvals, uh, all the approvals necessary to move forward with the construction. Um, we did want to bring this forward to you, obviously, because there has been some um, changes to the drainage designs that have been um, supplied to the engineering department who we're currently waiting on uh, uh, comments from. And uh, basically the phasing plan will be somewhat different than what was laid out in the, in the uh, existing permit uh, specific conditions. Um, there is no additional impact. There's actually a reduction in the amount of impervious area with moving forward with just the construction of building uh, number four at this time. Um, there really is no impact into any of the uh, regulated areas other than the uh, proposed detention basin, which will actually be a, uh, a temporary structure uh, that will help uh, the stormwater as associated with the construction of building number four. Um, and the only regulated setback that that's encroaching on is actually from a man-made wetland uh, that was constructed as part of the site master plan prior to 2011. Um, we are going to be available to answer questions um, in May after we receive comments from the town engineer and also staff. Uh, there is one request we put in front of the commission um, for a modest fee waiver uh, based on the fact that the previous approval fee was $32,000 and the modification permit uh, B would have been eight is eight thousand uh, one hundred and twelve dollars. Obviously, they have not moved forward with the project, um, so the town has already received thirty two thousand dollars, thirty two thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars. We're asking for some relief um, for that permit modification fee calculation. Um, the regulations, the, the Fairfield uh, Inland Wetland regulation states that the permit fees are to cover. Uh, are meant to recuperate the cost for staff review. And since this isn't a full permit uh, application and it's just a modification request, we were requesting a fee permit fee in the amount of $2,500, which we thought would be uh, sufficient to cover the uh, staff review on this permit. Um, we, we appreciate your, your willingness to uh, review that permit fee waiver. Obviously, we don't need a uh, answer on that tonight. It would be nice, um, but we would uh, like uh, ask uh, uh, for that review. Um, again, we we will be present at the next meeting to answer any questions regarding the project in more detail and to respond to any questions from staff and the town engineer. Terry, yes. Um, are you able to? Uh, well, this doesn't go for there, right? This is just good. Uh, if if any commissioners do have some questions tonight, would you entertain them? Yes, absolutely. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Uh, if, even though it's preliminary, if you have any questions. So, sure, if you go ahead, Mr. Fain. Brian, status of the litigation associated with. So the, all of the mitigation areas have been completed. Uh, there, there is actually a uh, existing, um, there is actually an existing stewardship permit. Um, I know the existing property owner has been um, mowing the property uh, annually in the fall as required. There is some uh, obviously invasive vegetation that needs to be uh, managed. Um, just uh, as there is on any property, um, there is some, you know, tree of heaven and mugwort um, and phragmites growing in the restoration area that does need to be addressed. Um, and those uh, those issues are uh, contained within the stewardship permit. 
Um, so, uh, you know, I think there, this thing has been in a little bit of limbo, obviously, um, because of the uh, complexities of the site. Uh, the current purchaser or contract purchaser of the of the property will be taking over and addressing all of the issues that are outstanding within the stewardship permit. Is it possible to get some kind of discussion of that associated with the modification? Yeah, I mean that that document already exists on the land records. It is binding. There is there is money being held in escrow to make sure that that work is being done. Um, again, uh, it's an invasive uh, mitigation, um, and there's a schedule of uh, tasks that need to be take that need to take place. So that is a binding document. It's just a matter of enforcement and moving forward with uh, with that. I, I I think as soon as there's uh, you know movement at the site, that uh, obviously that's always a condition of the permit. It's a condition of this existing permit. Um, it's just a mat. It's just a manner of moving forward with that and enforcing those specific and standard permit conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners have any questions? Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to table uh, the uh, the application to for permit modification and the fee waiver. Uh, to table it for staff and agency review. Want everything on the one motion? Yeah, just do it. Uh, well, right now it's the tabling, the tabling the pending staff, uh, pending staff and agency review of the permit modification. I'll entertain a motion to table. I'll make a motion to table that. Okay, anybody second that? Second. Rick? Okay. Jerry, which one both? No, just one. Just to table the table. permit modification. This is just to table the permit modification. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's also a um, motion for um, a waiver of fees. I'll entertain any motion regarding that. I'll make a motion to deny the waiver of the fees. Okay, there's a motion um, to deny the waiver of fees. Will somebody second that motion? God, second. Okay, so all in favor to deny the fees. 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, so that motion carries. I must get and 2 notes. Okay. Next we're on B new business 1. Thank you. West fruit. Thank you. One is request for release of performance bonds. Staff recommends approval by general consent of the following performance bond release due to satisfactory completion of partial completion of permit requirements. A, IWP 2020-21-03, formerly Sevidston, now Anchor Star Properties, LLC, 539 and 545 Benson, Bronson Road, subdivide, Demolish existing house and construct two new houses within regulated area. Request of Walter Stapleton for a final in common bond release of $12,100, a partial bond release of $7,200 of original seven, uh, $8,700 for lot A, that's 545 Bronson, and a partial bond release of $6,200 of original $7,700. For lot B, 539 Brompton. Remaining bond to be held for plant survival and invasive, invasive species control. Um, all we need is a general consent. Do the commissioners consent to uh, the partial release? All in favor? Aye. Yep. There you go. Number two, number two, monthly wetland business update for the agency. That be them, sir. Nothing really new on that, right? Nothing new. So, okay. No. Okay. Okay. Well, then, thank you. I was at a five. Two applications formal acceptance and start of 65 day legal time frame, determination of application significance, fee, and scheduling of public hearing, 
if necessary, and or decision on the application. One WP 22-132 Town of Fairfield, 725 Old Post Road, Burr Gardens Pond, Assessor's Maps 373, Parcel 491, restoration of an existing pond, Burr Gardens Pond, it's in a regulated area. Um, application type for staff, not significant. Public hearing petition received, no, as of 329-22. Petition period ends 416-22. Uh, last day for public hearing and decision is June 10th, 2022, and last regular meeting prior is June 1st, 2022. The staff recommends tabling pending legal notice and the departmental review. Tim? Tim? Yeah, just to uh, give a brief uh, ceramic call down. Uh, it's an ornamental pond where it's exotic for mansion. So the full. That's right. So you start, you recommend that we uh, table. I'll, I'll entertain a motion to uh, table pending. Uh, Second. Well, can you make a motion? I'll, 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 <laughs> I, I make a motion that we uh, table this. But we'll we'll see. Okay. See. okay. Would anybody? I second. Second. Do you have any seconds? All in favor? Tabling? Yes. Okay. <laughs> And we have six status of applications previously filed. One is WP-22-101, Town of Fairfield, 225 Melville Avenue, Tunxis Park, Assessor's Map 42, um, Parcel 48, construction of a firm and outlet control structure to create a detention area for flood mitigation within a regulated area, and the applicant requests withdrawal. Tim, this is, was it been, been withdrawn? That's correct. Uh, town of Fairfield, um, led by the engineering department, uh, has withdrawn this application due to uh, Army Corps of Engineers and the uh, American Team Dam Safety Group. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, Roman 6 2 WP. Dash 22 dash 102 city of Bridgeport 2390 Eastern Tripike. Fairchild Lula Golf Course Assessors Map 11 Parcel 2. Construction of two detention areas for flood mitigation within regulated area. Waiting public hearing scheduled for May 2nd, 2022. So there's nothing for us to do today. Correct. This, uh, this one may also be the same thing as Tom's uh, support. Uh, uh, that's still pending uh, official decision from your nation. Okay. Uh, sorry, engineer. Engineer, thank you. Roman 7, public hearing. IWPA 2021-22-05. Um, the decision may be made if a hearing is completed or the hearing may be continued. The original 35 day public hearing time frame to complete the hearing ends April 6, 2022. The 65 day time uh, extension may be provided by the applicant. So a further public hearing continued to June 10, 2022 is possible. And a potential continuation date is May 2nd, 2022. And earlier today, uh, really a couple hours ago, actually, late, late in the day, 
uh, we received a letter. Uh, I hope all the commissioners have it. If not, we can get it to you from uh, council representing the applicant requesting the extension. Um, but no new information, if you recall at the last meeting, whether you were here or online, you saw the amount of people here that had a lot of questions, a lot of uh, concerns. Um, and uh, really, from then till now, a, a letter coming in a couple hours before our um, meeting is, is the only response we had. Um, so I'll leave it up to the commissioners um, um, if we want to continue if you want to accept the request to continue or if you want to do something else. The only question I had, given this letter did specify a time frame, it was open ended. I think there was a time frame statutory. Okay. That is. Uh, Commissioner, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, it seems like this application keeps on getting piecemealed to us. And trouble hearing. Yeah, you get it. Oh, there we go. Seems like this application has been piecemealed to us. We've asked for additional information. We haven't received any. And as of 4 30 this afternoon, it's when we got our email for an extension on this public hearing. My recommendation would be to close the public hearing. Um, I, I would recommend denying this application without prejudice. And if it does present to us at a later date, that we you know do some sort of maybe fee wave on behalf of the applicant. And uh, you know, open it when they do have all the ducks in a row, when they have everything ready to present, when they have all the final plans, when they have their stakes, when we have a letter from Aquarian, when we have everything we need to review a formal application. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Chairman, Chairman, Hello. it's Chris Russo, the uh, attorney for the applicant. I was hoping if I'd be able to to speak with regard to this request. Sure, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Chairman, uh, members of the Commission, uh, Chris Russo um, with Russo and Rizzio LLC offices at 10 Sasco Hill Road in Fairfield um, on behalf of the applicant. Um, apologize that we weren't able to, to be ready for this hearing. Um, if you remember from the last meeting, uh, one of the main things we um, had to uh, get done was the soil testing. And so we were able to complete that soil testing, but unfortunately, um, it, it took longer for a little longer for it to get done. As most things this day take a little longer than usual. Um, so that soil testing was completed. Uh, we got all the information from it and our engineer is updating the plans. We were hoping that they would be ready by today um or before today even um but unfortunately um uh they they aren't ready um and and obviously i know staff would would probably want to review um as well as yourselves before the hearing um so but we have all that information and uh can revise the plans uh accordingly um and then also stake the property because um I know a number of the, the stakes that the commission had wanted, some of them will change now uh, from uh, kind of what was the original layout based on the results of the soil testing. So we're just asking for continuance to the next hearing um, for, the, for the engineer to update the plans uh, based on this information. And then so we can properly stake based on those revised plans. Okay, thank you, Council. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Alessia, I think your motion is still on did you, on the floor. Yeah, it's still on the floor. And would anybody, uh, after hearing what attorney uh, said for his client, would anybody care to second that motion? I will second that motion. I believe it's to the benefit of the commission for our applicants to come to the table with a full fully informed package uh, with enough time for the commissioners to visit the site fully and completely staked out with all the relevant scientific information that we need in order to make a decision. Okay. Any uh, other comments? Chairman, can I respond to that though? Yes. Because I mean, that we submitted a, a, an application 
that had the complete materials, but then we received comments and worked a response to those comments um, and gather that information. And so we tried as quick as we could to obtain all that information and and be ready to submit revised plans for it. But I, I mean, it's not like, uh, I, I, I've presented before this commission before and, and requested this type of continuance where we have tried to get all the information together for this meeting. It's taken a little longer to get it, but you know, this is all in response to comments. It's not that we um, didn't submit a complete application from the beginning. Um, it's it, it just in trying to respond to these comments. So, uh, you know, respectfully request, and we, we would waive any statutory time frame to uh, close the public hearing um, and just to carry it to, to May. Mr. Russo, with all the respect, I've served on several different boards in this town, and as a commissioner, I find it kind of insulting that you would send us an email at 4.30 the afternoon, two and a half hours before the meeting, where all of us here have worked Family lives and things you have to attend to besides reviewing your application for you to pull it in the middle of that. I find that very disrespectful. Sure. Well, Commissioner, and I, I apologize for that. I was we were hoping that we were going to be able to get these plans together. I, I had called earlier in the day to staff and then I sent the formal letter later in the day. We were hoping that this would be ready, um, but unfortunately, uh, it just wasn't able to get completed. Um, so uh, I apologize for that. I would also add that um, that when the property is staked and staked thoroughly and properly so that when the commissioners go to visit the site, that it is clear to them where everything is going to be. If the, the property was not staked properly and each one of us took time out of our schedules to go and visit and climb that hill, um, but it, it, there was, no clear indication of where anything was going to be. So I would argue that it was not a complete application in that respect as well. And please be aware that we can deny this application without prejudice and you can come back again. We're not, we are not um, disallowing you to do that. We would just like you to come back with a complete application. It's my understanding that the motion, just to be clear, it's the motion um, is to to deny without prejudice, without okay. prejudice but also uh, at that on a new submittal, we would um, um, take under consideration any appropriate fee waiver that is filed with subsequent application. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And that's what's been seconded by you. Yes. Okay. All in favor on the motion. Aye. All opposed. No, I think it passes. The motion passes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Now it's. Uh, wait, am I missing one? No, that one. Right there. Yes, that's the text. Okay. So IWPA WP 22 107 decision may be made if the hearing is completed or the hearing may be continued. The original 35 day Public hearing time frame to com complete the hearing ends May 11, 2022. A 65 day time extension may be provided by the applicant. So a further public hearing continuation to July 15th, 2022 is possible. A potential continuation date is May 2nd, 2022. Um, and this is for WP. 22107 Town of Fairfield 880 Morehouse Highway, Lake Mohegan, Assessor's Map 49, Parcel 157, Lake Dredging and Restoration of Beach Structures, including Stairways, Sidewalks, and the Concession Building within a regulated area. Staff recommends approval with conditions. It's this thing. Any Tim and is there any is any gonna present or yeah I'll give a quick overview of uh, engineering performance here. Yes, hi uh, Kelly Bell. Okay, hi. Here in Bell City out of 
Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. There's probably another meeting or something. Oh, yeah. Huh? Meeting night here at I guess so. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get some of the Incredible rain event. We had surface flow uh, from up gradient across uh, sheet, or sheet flow across the target part of the sky. It damaged around the building, undermined all the side of the concrete sidewalks, each area. Each area is controlled by Parks and Rec Department, but our jurisdiction doesn't manage the environment. Structural damage, uh, regrade the beach, and it's still open, still by part of the weekend, possibly down in the future, uh, fall or down the road to uh, be able to in auto work if necessary. So let's uh, turn it back over. Okay. Hello. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Uh, you, you can tell by that group uh, a little bit surprised. I did. I was hoping we could have a continuation or a pre construct, I mean, uh, uh, a public informational meeting. Um, this uh, application on the Rooster River and Tunxus Hill detention pond was withdrawn because uh, the Army Corps of Engineers now will be taking over and we couldn't get the word out to everybody and I guess one or two people spread like wildfire. But uh, anyway, regarding this project, uh, as Tim mentioned, the, um, the severe rain event from Hurricane Ida dropped approximately six inches of rain in about a three hour period. That caused severe erosion along the beach at Lake Mohegan, depositing sand in the swimming area of the lake. The erosion from the uh, runoff undermined the sidewalks, small retaining wall, and created uneven uh, gullies at the beachfront. The proposal tonight consists of uh, like a three part, three phase uh, solution that was compiled by the Fairfield Engineering Department and Race Coastal Engineers, our consultant. Uh, regarding the sand, uh, Phase one would be regarding the sand above the water. Uh, in order to get the quickest uh, uh, permits, uh, in order to uh, have the beach open before Memorial Day, uh, and judging by the uh, bathymetric and uh, surveying uh, done by race, uh, it was determined that we go from the edge of the water back towards the concession stand and the restrooms and regrade that area, uh, we can open that up uh, for, uh, for the beach and the swimming. Now, um, some of the areas in, in where the people will be swimming, uh, they range from mainly three to nine inches of sediment and sand that washed in, into, the, uh, into the lake there. There was uh, one or two spots at, at the deepest end where it could be up to 18 inches, but those were very rare. In general, it's probably, as I, as I mentioned before, between like uh, three and nine inches, probably, if I had to take a quick guess, uh, six or eight inch average, you know. Um, so that would be phase two, but uh, going back to the phase one, it would be to regrade the area, um, repair the concrete sidewalks, the walkways and the structure by uh, restoring the structural sub base underneath. Occurred, uh, on page eight, sheet eight. I can fill that with uh, sand, gravel, or flowable fill, depending on uh, how much is needed. And this would be to restore the beachfront infrastructure. Obviously, it's a safety issue for the public. We we can't we can't open the beach. Matter of fact, even now, this whole area has been closed since September. Um, 
yeah, yeah, last year, last September. Uh, we've in engineering here, and Meg has been working with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers, DEP as well, making sure we follow all the processes. Um, there was an NDDB, which is basically a threatened species that we had to look at. Um, I think it was a turtle, if I'm right, uh, yeah, up in the, the north end of the lake. So our activity has no bearing on that. But we had to go through the process. Away. <laughs> no. Almost, uh, that process was deep. Right. Oh, could the NDDB, the National uh, Diversity Database for State and Federal Restricted Species? That was the first phase, and that's where it was that, that's where we were kind of uh, trying to, uh, I'll be honest with you, try to expedite and, and rush the, uh, the permit here for that to get it open by uh, Memorial Day. But certainly taking the what we'd call the dredging out of it, I think, makes the decision for the conservation department a lot easier for that. Um, uh, we believe it's uh, FEMA eligible. Uh, we're working with FEMA at least to get some of the money back for disaster. Uh, some of the restrictions that they have are, are pretty tough as well. Uh, but for phase two, uh, as I said, we'll open up the beach and I don't think a swimmer is going to notice a three or a six inch difference. And, you know, they just go out four feet, you know, out into the water to, to get up to their uh, chest high or, or whatever. But if there are complaints or if it is deemed eligible or it's deemed that environmentally it's better to take that sand out, uh, that washed out, we will do that in the fall or in the winter. Uh, again, depending on the uh, regulatory agencies, uh, deep uh, fisheries uh, and, and conservation as well, if they put, impose any conditions or restrictions on that. That would be done in the, um, the fall or the winter. Uh, we would have a, a turbidity curtain. Uh, we would have the same, uh, probably the same contractor who's doing this work as well. Uh, We'll get a contract bid, so we'll, we'll know that, and they'll be ready to go whenever we, meaning the town and conservation, grant them that that per, and parks and Tech, uh, grant them that permission to go. Uh, you, your office, Tim, will be notified, obviously, uh, on that. Sometimes the conditions is even if we have a pre-construction meeting. Uh, I don't if if you want to hold it for for both phases one and two, we can, or we can separate at two different ones. Um, and then phase three, which uh, the um, consultant race has not really even started yet, but there's a fear of, you know, how do we prevent this from happening again? You know, obviously with the storm being more frequent and, and higher intensity, uh, we're looking at proposing a detention basin, which would be uh, uphill or south of the parking lot. I don't want to say north, but it's south of the parking lot in between the wetland and the uh, parking lot. Um, when we were out there, it looked like it used to be an old depression. I think just 20 years of neglect has been filled in. There's a couple of catch basins, so we would restore all that. Yeah. Right. Right. It's all coming down from uh, Morehouse uh, Highway and um, Ad is it Adley Road? Yes, Adley. Uh, coming coming down there and it would be basically an interceptor and, and to uh, and and to provide some detention overflows would go out into the storm system that goes along Morehouse Highway. Um, you know, again, if we get. 6 inches in 3 hours, I don't even know if this detention area will prevent it, but it will at least improve it. And then, you know, we can deal with a little 4 inch rill rather than a, a foot and a half 8 inch 18 inch gully that. That undermines sidewalks and that's all the sand go into the uh, into the uh, the lake there. So th those are the uh, things. Um, uh, if you don't want to preliminarily or, or uh, incorporate detention pond uh, three, uh, I mean uh, phase three, uh, what we would do anyway is we would resubmit. If you did approve the detention area, we would submit. Uh, separate plans to conservation and then let the staff decide whether that would require uh, an additional uh, hearing or if, if that would be part of this permit. But we would do separate plans. We only 
have the most preliminary plans of that. We haven't got. Is that the area that's dominated by Pragmatic? Um, I don't think so. Now this, uh, if if you don't mind, uh, Jay, I I can show you. Actually, it's uphill, and and it's it's just uh, before the park. The water that comes down to the hill from Anthony and, and Morehouse can intercept. We could make it bigger, but there's a wetland there, and I, I don't. It's right up below from like wetland restoration to natural history. Uh, possibly, possibly. Uh, we could do that if if we were to go into the wetland more and provide additional storage. I think that would have to be mitigation. But obviously, you know, most of the time you want to. Yeah, the big acres. Yeah, I know, but a lot of that, I mean, that's all the old um, gravel pit. A lot of those are what we call aqueduct soils. And it's all the wetlands anyway, so it might be uh, an opportunity. Now we call them a low quality wet. And so, if we were to make this bigger, then obviously it would be mitigation. And then, if there was something here or somewhere, somewhere here or along the Mill River, that's the uh, adequate mitigation. Of what's causing? Like what's causing? Well, on this one, it was six inches of rain in three hours. Uh, in general, most of the town's drainage, and I'm just throwing out hot numbers, but. They were sized in the 60s for maybe a four inch rainfall in 24 hours. So six and three, and then you might be falling. That's what most of the people in other meeting were complaining about is I guess you got eight inches of rain what Jay, four hours, 28 feet. Or what Jay is suggesting, would that alleviate the, the sheet flow going down and eroding? Uh, it would, I would know about alleviate, but it would help improve. It would cut down the amount or the velocity. And then, uh, and and you could not cut the water, water quality improvement. A lot of water that comes down that hill. I've seen that area wash out. I mean, I've been there for years. I've seen it many times. We'd only probably be able to do a shallow excavation. I'll have somebody have to say like a two, an eight foot, an eight foot, two foot up. Or you can't do like a, a huge eight foot deep thing because we're going to yeah. drown. Well, right. also because of the safety concerns. But yeah, I, I think it's an opportunity. But, but to have a, maybe a foot or two excavation. And then a couple of feet firm. Then you wouldn't have to do this again in five years, right? Uh, that would be what it would be again. That would be to reduce storm uh, storm damage and, and potential. So let's just say next year, if this is done, we get three inches in three hours. Maybe that would prevent the water from going in. If we get like we did it 2018, you know, eight inches in four hours. I mean, we'd have to do a detention pond bigger than the park. But it would at least it help to mitigate. But it would, yeah, it would help. It would help to mitigate uh, or reduce impact. And and Jay's suggestion of you know certainly if, if we go in here and survey, uh, it's not unreasonable based on past practices to ask for some sort of mitigation or or combine it with some sort of. You know, I'm not going to say we'll do a billion dollar crew uh, there, but, but some, right. some certainly if we're doing certain things and then some replanting or um, sometimes uh, you know different layers of uh, levels or elevations of a wetland, so you'll have a sedimentation area or uh, a low level and a high level of different edges. Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, we're here to answer any other questions. Thank you. Any commissioners have any questions? Mr. Payne? Comments? Yeah, sure. Um, so we thought that we were well prepared, well thought out, and well executed application. Um, so that's all the things that I would look for. It has the soils report, it has the biological evaluation, it has the mitigation, a lot of thought about how this is going to be done. I did have a couple questions for Phil. Um, doing any geo grid or other type of state. Subsurface stabilization to help slow the water down and maybe keep some of the sand subsurface in place. I think that might help in the long term, especially because it'll along the edges, the upper edges. The water is. We could look into that, right? The initial aspect was and a lot of this was surface uh, flow uh, in the areas of the existing drainage, or like we were talking about before, where there were a couple already catch basins and whatever. 
where we could do uh, maybe a, either a, a bypass or a convert some of that water uh, to, to somewhere else where, like you said, geocell, rechargers, uh, galleries, names for them. Uh, one of the reasons why we didn't along, and I'm glad you pointed that out, along the edges, definitely possible. I'm glad you didn't say under the parking lot, because I recall, I think that parking lot was paved two years ago or something like that. And so we don't want to try to and then we might even be able again depending on the final design stone check dams or velocity dissipators i think a lot of this was the water literally was shooting down mechanical versus the hydraulic the hydraulic would obviously be better it's such a clean way to do it but i don't know if you can do it this is because sand and it's shallow so but if you could do it, um, you know, it, 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 there's no plus, no must, no sediment. You wouldn't have to throw the water down the lake. So, prefer to see it done that way as possible. Hydraulic, you prefer? Hydraulic. Uh, it, do you so, we actually, considering this area is very small, it's only 267 cubic yards. We had, or when it was anticipated, more than 267 cubic yards. Treasure is a smaller area. So we did speak to our consultants and they have they had various partners in mechanical dredging could do better than hydraulic because hydraulic would be a very big thing. They have uh you can do it even diver assisted, you know, not even break uh, dredging. So, so I just put you know, it either way I'm okay with it. Yeah. You didn't have to worry about the sedimentation in the middle of the river. I don't think it, it, it would have to put down any water to be shit. So we observation. I thought this was very well prepared. They did the MVDB, they, they did all the work, they did everything. Uh, and I'd like to see this go through tonight. See the town get in there. Is that, is that your motion? Would you like to make a motion yeah. for approval? To approve. Anybody second? Okay. And all in favor? Aye. That's it. Thank you. And I, we could have done WebEx or whatever, but it was good to see. I haven't been <laughs> in person a while. So. Thanks very much. And, and as always, if you have any questions on this or other proposals that we have, feel free to contact us. All right. Thank you. All right. So we'll continue on to Roman eight. Inland wetlands legal enforcement action 1. Appeal of IWPA 2022 22 02 cop 180. Catamount Road, Assessor's Map 217, Parcel 22. Construct new dwelling driveway and subsurface sewage disposal to the regulated area. And this is just for information that somebody took an appeal of our decision. Tim? Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, number nine, other A introductory presentation of draft wetlands map revision by SLR. It's uh, uh, Megan from SLR. She uh, keep on the line. She, uh... Yes, hi, can you guys hear me? It's Megan Raymond. Um, how's my audio? Yeah. Yeah, you're doing. We can hear you, and it's good to see you again. Great to see you guys. Uh, sorry, I couldn't come down in person. I broke my hand recently, and I've just been um, trying to rest up a little bit. Um, so, thank you very much for entertaining this item tonight. Um, we have. I'm Megan Raymond. I'm a professional wetland scientist and registered soil scientist, certified floodplain manager with SLR. And since we um, stopped our work in the conservation department last August. Um, we were retained by the town to update your 1994 tidal wetland map specific to the um, elimination or the removal of tidal wetlands 
from your town mapping. Um, we did talk about this. Um, the commission talked about this item um, as, a, as an agenda item in, I think, the late spring, early summer. And as you're aware, you have a town wetland map, a very comprehensive wetland map that's comprised of grids. I believe there are 180 grids, um, 0.5 miles by, yeah, 0.5 miles by 0.75 miles, and they're wrote, uh, laid out alphanumerically, A through L, 1 through 21. And within that map are about 2,500 acres of wetland, and they extend all the way down to Long Island Sound. And as we are aware, the, the, the state statute in Connecticut has very specific definitions for both inland wetlands and watercourses under which you have the purview, as well as tidal wetlands. And the inland wetlands and watercourses are defined by the characteristics of soil, poorly drained, very poorly drained, alluvial and floodplain, whereas tidal wetlands are defined by the presence of hydrophytic vegetation, or rather halophytic vegetation, could be hydrophytic as well, as in addition to a landscape position and the influence of tides. Um, and the, the tidal wetlands obviously are under the jurisdiction of the state and there's an exclusion um, in the statute that, that provides that purview and there cannot be town municipal municipalities do not have authority over tidal wetlands. So the purpose of the exercise, the purpose of the task was to update these maps or town maps to eliminate the portions of your, the, the wet, town wetlands as identified presently in the 1994 map series, um, avoiding any tidal wetlands. And we have completed that exercise. We've given um, the conservation director drafts of that, um, of those results. And how we came about or how we went after the, the, this endeavor was to, to, to receive the the polygons of the existing map, wetland mapping from MetroCOG. We put it into GIS and we took a look at the imagery on an aerial and noted obviously these tidal estuaries and streams um, as well as the landscape position. It's very specific in the tidal wetland law, the tidal wetland statute, that the extent of tidal inundation is um, within one foot and above or within up to one foot above local extreme high water. And local extreme high water is based on a curve put out by the Army Corps of Engineers. So local extreme high water in the town of Fairfield, and this is different from CJL, it's different from HTL. Um, it's local extreme high water, which is elevation 4.7 um, NAVD, and if you add plus one, 5.7. So we look at the landscape at elevation six and below, it made modifications to the tidal wetland maps accordingly. Um, the result of the exercise um, came out with a, a, a removal of approximately 370 acres of wetland in the, primarily the southern portion of town, south of 95, but there were a few small areas above or north of 95. Um, and where we are in the process now is we just wanted to give you the preliminary results tonight, let you know that this, is, this has been completed and that there'll be a formal um, map amendment filed um, to go through the formal, you, know, you have a very a formal formal process in your regulations, the town regulations to, to, to modify your town maps. And that's gonna take place next. And there'll be a public hearing um, by which we can present the technical information. Hopefully we, I'll, I'll be all set to do that in person, of course. Um, I, you know, knock on wood, I guess these days. Um, and, um, and that's the formal process. And you'll have the ability to, um, and obviously tonight you can answer I'm happy to answer any questions, but um, just wanted to give you a, a, a summary of the work to date. Um, we can dig into some of the methodologies, but the next steps would be the filing of the formal map amendment, public hearing, and then formalization of the of the uh, of the results through your your uh, commission, and then um, obviously updating, working with MetroCog to update the um, the GIS map. So that is a summary of the of the of the work and the, the reason that I came before you tonight. So I'm happy to answer any questions and thanks. Thanks very much. Well, thank you. Um, any questions, commissioners? To the public hearing. Okay, thank you. Looking forward to seeing you in person. Great, great. And I'm sure we could probably circulate um, these these maps. Um, as as they um, yeah, obviously at the discretion of the of the director. So 
Thanks so much. You guys sounded great. It was a really full agenda. Very impressive. Get better soon. Heal well there. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Take care, guys. Bye bye. All right. Uh, the next one is uh, on nine. Other B availability to publicly notice and schedule site walks on 410 or 417. Uh, Tim. I just wanted to put it out there. Uh, I had three uh, site visits that uh, uh, now two. Uh, that would be Lake Mohegan and Mohegan. No problem. Get rid of that one, Tim. Yeah. Um, well, let's, uh, I, I think it's best just to focus on 410 and not 417. Um, and is this, so it's just the one Lake Mohegan? Yeah. Yeah. You're hard working, my friend, you're a hard worker and you just, you know, that it's just another day for you. It's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Seeing bird, bird garden for that. Uh, garden? That's the, the thing behind the office. Behind, you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we it, we can go by and say hi to people at the town hall. Say hi to you. Yeah. See them on our own. It's okay. So no, just uh, just Mohegan. No, no, Lake Mohegan Sunday. This Sunday. Uh, yeah. Lake Mohegan this Sunday. Uh, what's a good time? Whatever works. Yeah, whatever time you get out of bed. Right. Whatever. <laughs> uh, are there any? Eight thirty. Sure. Get it. Get it over with early on, and get back to just have breakfast and go there. Okay. Good. Eight thirty on the tenth. You can do public notice for that. Okay. Uh, oh, great. Uh, Any well, anybody else on anything on other to discuss? Would you like to bring anything up? I think um, had some discussion about when we could notice. It's confusing when some of these you just buy go on the full list and so so you know seeing them for the first time. I think it might be clearer for me and Pollock if we instead of having old this new this we had pending applications, new applications, applications we modify something along those lines on the agenda rest. So it's just it's just my thought. I know that we have a um, issue of one of the applications. Being appealed regarding the way we notice it. I don't know what that is. I don't know if we got any opinion. Just so we can think. Okay. Sure. We'll take a look at that and maybe we can draw up some mock new agendas or something and see how that works at the, the next meetings. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn then. I. Unless there's something. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. All right, guys.